I'm going to give you a scenario, and then this will be my last question for you here about this, this concept that we can choose to have success. If I right now am working at a fast food restaurant, and there's nothing against it, I'm just trying to give a scenario. If I'm working at a fast food restaurant right now, and I perceive it to be a dead-end job, because it's not a corporate chain, it's just a, a small individual fast food restaurant, locally owned, and I don't see any room for advancement, and I've got $50 to my name. How can I choose to be successful? What easy. are some things I can do? Easy, easy, easy. Here we go. Okay. First of all, value yourself where you are. Not the circumstances that surround you, but value yourself where you are. Value yourself where you are. If you are a server or a dishwasher or whatever, you can be the king of that company because whatever your assignment is, that becomes your operating procedures, you own that, you can become the king or queen of that. Okay, whatever you're doing. Whatever you're doing. If I'm flipping, if I'm doing fries. And, and I guarantee you, your consistency and, and your ability to really stand on top of that will be recognized by others. I know some of the neatest people I've hired when working for me were people that were wait servers. So, in, in, in restaurants. So, you're, so the idea is you're, you're owning it, then the boss will start to notice, hey, these floors are always clean. Not these only floors. will the boss notice, but think about a restaurant. Guess who comes into a restaurant? Customers. Customers. And many of those customers are business owners. Many of those customers are looking for people to hire. I mean, when, when you have a chance to be your best, you have no idea who you're impressing. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to just be devil's advocate for a second. I work in businesses all the time where I see this. I see this because I'm hired as a business consultant to fly in. You know, to the, they hire the wizard to come from out of town to come in and help them. And I come in and I see a young man in the meeting texting during the meeting, uh, being late, not working mm -hmm. hard, not being engaged. He's not valuing where he is. Mm -hmm. And I'll pull him aside and say, hey, young man, what's going on? He's like, well, I don't really try because, you know, this company's not going anywhere. He's not really hurting the company as much as he's hurting, hurting himself. himself. Right. Okay. So step one is value where I'm at. Value where you are. Is there, is there anything else I should do? Value where I'm at and then good things happen or is there something else I should do? Now, first of all, you value where you are. Then you put feet to that value in process. You work hard. You work hard. You work hard. And the next part of that is develop a persona, a personality around you that says, I am here. See me. Don't become this person entity that people see through you. You let your personality say, see me, I am here. I'm gonna tell you a capstone story that I think that encapsulates this. We have a young man who uh, I actually sold DJ Connection to. And I tell this story all the time to the staff, they're probably tired of hearing it. But he had a, a child before he was married. He was in a financially tough situation. And he wants to apply for a job for us. We're not hiring. He gets an introduction from somebody I tell him we're not hiring. Somehow he, he grows back like bamboo. He shows up at the office. I'm like, who brought this guy in? And he said, Josh says, I think we should bring in this guy because he's a, he's a, a good guy. Well, when he talks, uh, he's from Locust Grove and I know a kind of rural Oklahoma. And he kind of talks like that. that we was, you know, that country of bumpkin kind of that. We, we was doing this and you was doing that. And he really has a hard time speaking articulately. And... He's never done sales before. He wants to do telesales, and he doesn't. Speaking on the phone in a non-country thing is not his strong suit, and he has no experience. But he just keeps showing up. He shows up early. I get to the office. I like to be there first one there. Mm -hmm. He shows up. Homie is showing up before I get there <laughs> with a coffee. Hey, just wanted to. So he figured the best way to get one-on-one -on -one time with me was to beat me to the office. Now, I had a home office. I lived in my home office. So it was a situation where it's this house right here. Warning, these web clips feature stunts performed either by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. I want to show you this real quick. This was the house. So this was our house. Okay. And this right here is the office. He literally is, this is our little land bridge. So I have to get up like 10 minutes before I come to work. I walk down this little bridge. He's already parked his vehicle and he's waiting on me. <laughs> and I'm like, how'd you get in? And he says, oh, well, I got a key from such and such. So he gets there early every single day. And then, you know, I don't think I'm even paying him. Honestly, Cliff, Cliff, I don't think I was even paying him. I think he was just showing up. And then one day, one of the guys is like, hey, when are you going to start paying him? And I'm like, I didn't hire him. I don't want to pay him for And they're like, well, why don't you give him a shot? 
So this, this, this insanity continues. He's bringing me coffees every day. And then one day it happened. And he, he, got, he got the best of me. When it happened, I remember I was looking for somebody to do some marketing. And I said, I need someone to do all the mailers for the schools. I need someone to lick a stamp, put something on the stamp, and I'll pay someone. I need to mail like 500. We mailed uh, letters out to every school mm -hmm. in Oklahoma trying to convince them that they, we should, uh, that we're the best entertainment source for them, for their school proms and dances. I needed a stamp licker. And I'm like, who amongst us can lick stamps? No, everyone's like, I don't want to do it. I'm like, you're going to have to handwrite the address for every one of these because people open it. They're more likely to open, open it if it's handwritten. Right. I need a handwritten, I need a guy to write, Dear Miss Smith, <laughs> to 400 school, you know, schools, and I need a guy who can lick a stamp. I'll do it. But like, you'll do it? All right, Jason. You are now in charge of stamp licking and letter writing. So he's in charge. No one else will do it. Well, then I said, I need a guy to do, and I'll do it. No one else would do it. I'll do it. Well, then I said, I need a guy to be in charge of our sales team. A year later. Let's have Jason do it. Then I had a software problem. I, I couldn't grow the company because I didn't know how to build software. Jason says, I'll write it. I'm like, you write software? Oh, yeah. He's never written a software program in his life. He is a hack in college, doesn't know what he's doing. And he volunteers. He says, for 3% of your gross sales above 20000 a week, I will write your software for you. So I signed, just like you said, I'll sell your Stairmaster to the, yeah. to the federal government. <laughs> he says, I'll make your software. Well, then that crazy guy, when I go to sell my business, when we're doing a you know, multi-million dollar business, I go to sell it. I'll buy it. How are you going to buy it? I, I got money saved. Find out he gets some money from his aunt. Next thing you know, he's in business. The point is, he created his own opportunities right. by showing up early, by being diligent, by bringing coffee, and it was hilarious. And I just remember, uh, uh, I just remember when I put Jason in charge of sales. One young man said, "How come he gets to be in there? He's such a suck up. All he does is brings coffee and shows up <laughs> early. How come he gets to be the, the manager?" And I was like, "Well, because he." Sucks up, he brings coffee, he, you know, shows up early. So anyway, I just think that's a, a neat thing where it doesn't matter where, where you grew up or where I grew up or where anybody grows up. Whether you have money, you don't have money, whether you're a banker, whether you're in the military, whether you're picking cotton, whether you're on a bus up to St. Louis, whether you're in Tulsa, whether you're wherever in the world you are, success is a choice. Yeah. I appreciate you coming in and letting me uh, just mentally marinate and, and, and uh, uh, converse with you and, and pick your brain. I, I know it's got to be painful from your perspective, but I appreciate you so much. Hey, it's been good. It's been good. It's been good. Thank you, sir.